Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Mikey P, back with another video, and I ain't even gonna waste no time, man. I see a lot of y'all are coming over here from the TikTok, and that's because I posted a video of me playing Nintendo 64 in virtual reality. A lot of y'all were like, man, what? How is this possible? Don't worry, this is the video right here. I got y'all. I'm explaining everything. Now, for starters, the program I use is called Emu VR, all right? And what's at the base of Emu VR? is an emulator that's it's easiest if i explain to you what's at the base of emu now if you don't know what an emulator is go ahead and google it youtube it whatever then come back to this video but i'm gonna try to explain it to you in the simplest the simplest of terms an emulator is just software that gives you the ability to run games on the hardware that they weren't intended for for example i love to play mario kart on my pc specifically double dash i love double dash but guess what i don't have a gamecube i shouldn't be able to run mario kart double dash on my pc right well i can with the help of emulators now a lot of the confusion comes from people might think they need a crazy pc to run an emulator well you might need a decent pc to emulate a playstation 3 for example but you don't need a crazy pc to emulate old school games you could pretty much run them on your damn smart fridge honestly people run emulators on their cell phone apple android like they're both powerful devices they can run emulators the xbox is a great emulation machine if you have an xbox one or an xbox one series x or whatever the new one is you can run it on both of those you know so if you don't know what an emulator is man well today's your today's your birthday man congratulations i'm blessing you Anyways, there's all different kinds of emulators, but the one that Emu uses is called RetroArch. You're gonna see, you're gonna see it later on in the video. We're gonna drag RetroArch into our Emu folder, and that's essentially the core of all of this. You know. So when you run an emulator through Emu, though, Emu puts you in this virtual bedroom. It starts off with this blank canvas. And then you're able to customize it however you want, man. You can put your, your own posters, your own wallpaper. We're going to see all of that later on in the video. Don't worry. I'm going to show you everything. Just sit tight. So the first thing I want you guys to do is click on that download link in the description. And that's going to be for Emu VR, man. That's the link right there. 1.0.9.1, man. You got it. Boom. All right, guys. To be able to open these files, you're going to need WinRAR or 7-Zip. Preferably, I use WinRAR. It's pretty easy to set up, and I'll leave a link in the description. Once you got that, go ahead and click on this arrow right here, Show in Folder. You're going to find your download. We're going to extract to emu vr underscore. This basically just gives it its own folder. Now, everything's in this folder right here. This is the whole emu folder, everything we're going to work with. So for the sake of this video and me not confusing it with my own stuff, I'm going to rename the folder YouTube. All right, so we're working in the YouTube folder. Now, go ahead and cut it. Come to your C drive or your D drive, wherever. Paste, all right? Make sure it's over here. Like I said, everything we're working with is going to be right in here. All right, so remember how we were talking about emulators? Well, there's another link in my description. And that's for RetroArch. That's the emulator itself. Once you download that, do the same thing. Extract to RetroArch. All right, guys. So go back into your Emu folder, and we're going to delete their RetroArch folder. We're going to cut the one we downloaded. Right-click, cut. Come over into this one. Paste. Now we got our RetroArch folder in here. And boom. This is everything. The one we just deleted was empty. This is everything we need right here. All right, guys. For the next step, we're going to be dragging our games over into Emu. Now, I can't tell you where to find these games, but trust me, a simple Google search, and you guys will figure it out, all right? For this demonstration, I'm going to be using Tony Hawk's Underground. So, once you got your game, go ahead, right-click it, cut it, copy it, however you want to do it. Come in your Emu folder, go to Games, and you'll see there's a bunch of examples and whatnot. You could go ahead and delete this. All they're telling you to do is what I'm about to show you right here. You're going to want to create new folder, 
name it. We're going to name this one GameCube. Paste your game in here. Alright, so essentially, this is where you would keep your GameCube games. So let's go back up. Let's create another new folder. Let's say we want to put some PS2 games in here. Alright, we're going to name this folder PS2. And then you would click on it and drag your PS2 games in here, just like you did for GameCube. Alright, we're just going to use Tony Hawk for this example. Alright, now for the next step. And we're almost done here, guys. You're going to go back up into your Emu folder and click on the one that says Game Scanner. You're going to run the .exe file. Hit Update Core List. It has a little star next to it. Once you get that, hit Attempt Autofill. Once you do that, Save Changes. Scan Games. Last but not least, click Download Missing Cores. All this is doing is just putting your, emula your emulator together for you. Hit OK. We're done here. Alright guys, so for this next step, this is only going to pertain to people who are trying to play PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 games. Now, if that's not you, then you're fine. But if you do want to play PlayStation games, you're going to need a BIOS. What a BIOS is, is PlayStation's official firmware. So, it is illegal for me to tell you where to go get those, but... Just like with ROMs, a simple Google search, and trust me, you'll find it in seconds. Once you get your BIOS, go ahead and extract it, just like I showed you earlier. And then cut it. You're going to pull back up your emo... F you're going to pull back up your emu folder, and you're going to go in RetroArc, System... And then you're going to make a new folder right here. This new folder is going to be called PCXS2. Paste your BIOS in here. Now you can run PS2 games. For PlayStation 1, you'll follow the same process. But you'll name the folder PSX. And just remember... Your PlayStation BIOS is different from your PS1 BIOS. So that's going to be its own search up here. Alright guys, so for this next step, I'm going to show you how to customize your room. So, we're going to hit Custom, Posters. Right here you got a folder name Examples. Let's open that up. And let's copy everything out of here. Let's go back. Let's just drop it right all in here. Replace the files. Boom. So, if you look at these, all these are different shapes. These are the shapes of the posters that are going to be in your room. So, for example, three is very rectangular shaped. One is pretty narrow. So, we're going to go on Google Images. And we're going to search up some 90s posters. How about some Mr. T, huh? Who doesn't love Mr. T? Images. I like this one. What about y'all? Save image as. Now, for this, we got to save them. Now, this part is very important right here, guys. You see how it fits the shape of number one? And number one is named 01.png. We're going to have to name that Mr. T file 01.png. We have to make sure all of these match. So, right here, file name, 01.png. Save. All right. Let's come back in here. We could delete the original 01. Boom. And we're going to drag our new one in here. All right, so we can find that picture we just downloaded in our downloads folder. So we're going to come over here and just drag it into our posters folder. And now look, we got Mr. T. This will show up in the room as soon as I load it up. This Mr. T poster will be on the wall. You're going to do the same thing for every single one of these. However many posters you want. You can have up to 31. <laughs> I put all 31 in my room. My room is fully decked out. But yeah, man, just match up the shapes and make sure you match up the names. 
All right, guys, so you can see that our Mr. T poster is showing up in the room, which is pretty cool because you just see me grab that off of Google Images and throw it into the games folder. Another thing you could take note of is that all the example posters are popping up all over the wall now with their recording numbers. That gives you more of an idea on how you want to map the room out. For example, you might want to put your favorite posters at spots like 3 and 5 because they're huge and other posters at number 28. Alright guys, so if you load up the game right now, you'll notice that all your cartridges, all your CDs, they don't have any art on them. They're all blank. So, remember we're playing Tony Hawk's Underground for the GameCube in this example. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in GameCube, Tony Hawk's Underground, and let's just put disc art. Now, obviously, just change the name of the system in the game for whatever you're trying to download. I'm going to take this one. Boom. Save image as. Now, remember, every time we've been dragging stuff in here, we've been having to name it very specific. We're going to do the same thing with this step. So, all right, guys. So this part's mad simple. Just go in games, find your game, and look how, it's look how it this is titled. Tony Hawk's apostrophe S underground parentheses USA dot end kit that's all got to go in in the title of this this image right here you don't have to worry about the dot iso at the end because that just tells you like what kind of file it is but that dot end kit has to come in here so tony hawks apostrophe s underground parentheses usa dot end kit boom great now our cd is going to have some artwork Right, guys so we're pretty much done with the setup i showed you how to download emu inject retro arc and even get your own custom artwork now before we move on to launching the game one more thing i want to touch on real quick run the game scanner after you add a new game you won't see that new game in emu you have to run the game scanner first it has to make sure that there's games there so over here we have emu vr.exe you don't have to worry about that but we have Force Desktop, Force Oculus, Force Steam VR, Force Virtual Desktop. Obviously, they are as they sound. Whatever you're playing on, that's what you're going to use. For this, we're going to be using Virtual Desktop on the Oculus Quest, so we're going to use this. You wouldn't use Force Oculus because that's for someone who's going to use Air Link or just be using a link cable in general. That would be Force Oculus. Force Desktop is someone who doesn't want to play in VR. They just want to play on their computer. You could force it to open up on your desktop. Anyways, we're going to run this one. Okay, guys, we're in VR. If you want to use your touch controllers, that's fine. You could actually walk around the room if you prefer that. I feel like sitting down right now. So, on your left Quest controller, press the menu button. And I like to go into settings and change spawn games at start to nothing. That's why you guys are probably seeing a bunch of TVs and consoles already everywhere, and mine is empty like this, it just looks a lot cleaner to me. As you can see, we got all our posters in here, our room is nice and decorated. Now, I'm gonna show you how to play some games. This menu right here, you can spawn whatever kind of TV you want. Click on systems, you can spawn your systems. We're gonna go with the GameCube. This one, this one says knock off GameCube on it. We're gonna place it right here. And grab us a TV now. Let's go with the let's go with a small TV. You can actually flip it. Come back here so you can plug your cables in. Grab your grab your console. You see a red indicator right here? Grab the wire, plug it in. Easy peasy. I don't know why the GameCube looks like this, but as you can see, we have Tony Hawk's Underground on the GameCube running right here. The SNES looks like it's supposed to. The 64 looks like it's supposed to. The PlayStation. Oops, almost broke my TV there. They all look, look the way they're supposed to. I don't know why the GameCube, the PS2, they don't. But anyways... You're going to get your pointer out, laser click on this, and just hit A. Now I'm in TV mode. I can't move around the room anymore. 
if I wanted to move around the room again, I would click the two analog sticks in, and now I can move around again. But we want to play the game, so we're just gonna get our pointer on there. Boom. Now I'm controlling the game. Now, at this point, guys, I don't have to use my Oculus controllers, obviously. I could use an Xbox controller, whatever. Whatever that you can connect to your PC at this time, go ahead and connect it. Bluetooth, whatnot. RetroArch will, re will recognize it immediately, and you'll be able to play on it. Just for shits and giggles, <laughs> let's try to skate in Tony Hawk's Underground <laughs> with the quest control. How would I do a manual just on the stick? Oh! <laughs> okay, we got it. Ooh. Okay, yeah. Don't don't play Tony Hawk on the on the touch controllers. <laughs> you might be able to do it with something else. This is not a prime experience. They calling me Mikey Hawk, man. Look at the com on the quest controller though. On the quest controller though. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. Hopefully it wasn't too complicated and I was able to get you set up. If I did, go ahead and leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'm always looking for more VR gamers, so I'm going to leave my Discord in the description below. And hopefully you guys will take the chance to come over and get down with the community. For the ones that do, I encourage you to come over there and show me what, what you create in an emu, man. What's your room look like? I need to know. I'm going to be coming at you guys with a lot more videos. I got a second YouTube channel where I do reactions exclusively from within VR chat. So go ahead and check that out. But till next time, it's your boy Mikey P.